All right. Today we're going to have some fun working with air pressure. And what we're going to do first is we're going to mess around with creating vacuums. And here I've got one of these Reynolds handy backs that they use for preserving food by creating vacuums in packages and containers. I've got an old mad scientist with it and decided to take the batteries out and instead directly wire it up to an external power source so I can get a little more power on this vacuum. <laughs> and the elements we're going to test, we're going to use this jar and I've poked a hole in the top of it so I can get this part of the vacuum pump with the seal on there to create the vacuum and what we have here first is we have hot water is what we're going to start with then we've got some Gillette Fusion Hydrogel Shaving Gel and then last year that we're going to try is we're going to put some Mountain Dew in there and see how it is at negative pressure now right now atmospheric pressure is about 15 psi or pounds per square inch so there's 15 pounds of pressure pushing around on the outside of this and inside in the water. Now with our vacuum pump we're going to decrease that 15 psi inside and we're going to create what's called negative pressure inside. The outside will be positive pressure and we'll see a, a difference in how water or I should say hot water will be if we were to be up at altitude with this or in fact if we were in a low atmospheric pressure environment such as if we were way up in the atmosphere now I'm gonna it's gonna be a little hard for me to talk over this thing so you'll just have to bear with me but you may get the general idea of what's going on so what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull a vacuum on this jar with this hot water and what they should do is with the decreased pressure this will make the water boil at the room temperature because with the decreased pressure, I'm now lowering the boiling temperature point at which the water will boil. So let's see what happens here. We'll put the vacuum pump on. Now, as you can see, we've got air bubbles coming from the bottom up to the surface of the water and escaping out the vacuum pump. By creating the negative pressure we've lowered the boiling temperature of the water and this allows it to boil at the room temperature. I can turn the vacuum off here for a little bit and it still has negative pressure in there so it's still able to do the boiling process now I do this with hot water because it makes it a little easier to do the boiling action than if I was to do it with warm or cold water because you need much more negative pressure in order to get that to boil and we know we have a vacuum because the vacuum pump is holding the jar onto it so that's how you got a true indication there's a vacuum in there. And then if we let the air back in, see the water jumps because it's a sudden rush of air from the outside going back into the jar. Let's see. Now I'm going I mean probably gonna split this out into two parts so that I don't have to rush anything. There's a little interesting thing you can do with this setup as well that I'm gonna show and you've probably seen it before. I'm just gonna put some paper towels down so I don't make a mess here. But you've all probably seen the tricks where they put 
a small glass of water that's filled up partially and then they put a business card or something on it and then turn it over and it keeps the water inside well I'm gonna tell you straight forward that's exactly what I'm gonna do here but here's a catch all of them are doing that without having any kind of hole in their business cards like I said at the beginning to use the vacuum pump in here there's a hole in the cover on this I'm gonna do this same thing by turning it over and we're gonna see what the water decides to do so let's see what happens I don't know if I can show you the hole without it spilling initially there see here's our hole right here that's where the vacuum, lip of the vacuum pump goes. So let's see what happens when we turn this over. Yeah, we got a little bit of water out. But notice how the water's still inside. It may be a little hard to see, and I'm going to try to turn this. But you can see the water staying up inside. And it gets an occasional air bubble. And you'll be lucky to see it if the water tries to drip out. So you can see uh, the water try to come out and then get pushed right back in. See, it's the air pressure on the outside that's keeping the water inside. Because what we've got outside, we've got 15 pounds of pressure outside. And we only have about a pound or two of water here. So that's a pretty significant difference there, and it's holding the water up inside the jar from leaking out of that hole. Now, of course, this gets into uh, some other stuff like surface tension and adhesion, cohesion, but that all involves water, and we're talking about air pressure. See, I turned it a little bit there, so it was able to drip. This is a little different, but it's the same kind of concept as what you see with guys doing business cards. But this time you can actually see the water trying to come out and getting pushed back in by that air pressure. We'll turn it back over. Nothing leaks out. So let me go dump out that water real quick. And we'll probably do the shaving gel because that doesn't take a lot. Okay, let's get this out of the way. Now, what would it be like if you were to shave with your shaving gel in negative pressure? Well, let's find out. That's your shaving gel at normal atmospheric pressure. Now let's put some negative pressure on it and see what happens to that. Pull our vacuum pump up here, put the lip of it on over the cover, and let's apply some negative pressure. Notice how the shaving gel is expanding when we put negative pressure on there. The lower air pressure, the shaving gel expands into foam. See, all that little bit of shaving gel has all been expanded out into foam where we applied negative pressure to the inside. So that's what it would be like to shave if you were doing it up at high altitude. The moment you spray it out of the can, it turns into foam. <laughs> and we'll release our pressure. And then, of course, there's that little air bubble that made it go everywhere inside. But now it's all back at the bottom. Not to mention, it's basically all over the inside of the jar now. That's what shaving gel does at negative pressure. We'll get on here to part two, and we'll look at what soda does in negative pressure. <laughs>